It's day 17 and as you can see, I've decided to shave so let's get into today so you can rave about the success you will gain. Now regarding the case study, it's important to know that the assessors will typically view in sections and they have been trained to ensure that the key elements as described by your Canada guide are in there as well. So this is why it's important with the introduction, the my approach, the my achievements and conclusion for you to not change the structure or the main headings or rearrange it. You're welcome under the headings though to put subheadings to direct reference to in regards to if it's a key issue, a solution or an option. And by doing this, it creates and shows due care and consideration for those who are reviewing. As you want to impress, show the assessors you have created a clear and easy to read professional report to avoid making the assessors needing to hunt for the information. And it also helps to ensure that you have put everything that you need to put in there so it reads professionally. So this is why for today's action items, we're going to be creating draft number two of the My Approach. So everything you drafted yesterday, we want to start adding some more specifics, recommendations, and some edits to help you create something that is great. You want to be reviewing your own writing realistically as well, as this is why it is recommended to review the example submissions to review how someone else has written it, the keywords, the references, and the specifics about the what and how, but always seek your counselor's advice as they have done it before. What the case study is not, is you're not writing in a way where you are saying that you are the best person, you are the greatest, and everything that you do is the only way to do it. The assessors really want you to look at it subjectively and open with your whole submission so it does look professional and you're professionally seeking advice and using specific processes, being ethical and not missing a step. So the dot points I made in the mind map, these can be used as subheadings and you can be creative with these headings, but I'll show you later what others have done. Now, one thing I have noticed through all my years at RICS is it really depends on the scope and your background of your day-to-day -day role. Some people might start writing it from more of a technical point of view, but as I mentioned, this is a professional report that needs to be produced, so keep that in mind when writing. As we get into some examples of the My Approach, you will notice a few things in the writing. They are all different as it's their own experience, but you'll be able to see from their involvement and references to key specific words, and you'll be also be able to see what they did. They are not just inputting these little bits of extra information to reach the 3000 words, but rather using these as hooks to really identify to the assessors the reasoning and what they did. I did show early on in the challenge the QS submission example, so go download it if you haven't, and we're gonna start from there. Now, I will not fully break it down, but I want you to notice the structure, the layout, the keywords, and more. At first, we can see the key issues. We can see the why and the issues, and further explanation of issues in detail from the investigation. You will see key points towards specific words used, the why they did it, and I really like the layout towards the options, advantages, disadvantages, and laying it out like that, as it can really help in saving words, but careful consideration is given to those options and reasons of why, but what they've also considered. Now to note, we can see their involvement, what they did, and a detailed explanation on that. The next example is from commercial property, and what really stands out is the layout they have decided to use different subheadings, which is all fine and all correct. And we can see inspection and measurement to reference of one of the technical competencies, which further explains an issue identified. I really like that they use the picture to show the comparables, which is great as now they don't need to write it out, which can save you some valuable words. Now I'm not gonna break this one down, but you will notice that the subheadings and pictures are missed and you immediately need to hunt. Where is the information? Where is that key issue? Where are the solutions? Now your counselor and assessors will need to start highlighting themselves and try to figure this out, but they have been trained and they do know it is under my approach, but you really know and you start to feel that it's not that same care and same feel. Now technically, it's not incorrect. And this person is now MRICS, so clearly it's well written, but the assessors will review your submission holistically. So you want to ensure that everything is great. And finally, one from planning and development. Now you will see references which don't calculate to the overall word count, but by saying RICS guidelines, 
two words, they didn't have to say RICS Guidance Notes Conflict of Interest 2021, which is seven words, saving them five. Now, if we have multiple references with each of our case studies, you'll find that this could save you hundreds of words. I really like that they've used the options and explained, you know, formal tender, informal private treaty, which are keywords and hooks that shows the assessors the level of understanding towards that type of option, but clearly shows what they considered with a further explanation. So for today, with this new information buzzing around, you have got yourself a second draft. And I really want you to start inputting everything and everything down again, but we want to start completing it all in sections. The introduction, the my approach, the achievements conclusion, we can all chunk down at a later stage with the helpful advice of your support network and counselor. There is a method to all of this and it will become very clear over the next few days and coming weeks. I will encourage you to have your candidate guide on hand and always read and reference it and review it for what is mentioned in each section. You can download obviously the unedited version of the case study or the mind map template and continually to ingrain that in in what needs to be answered. So let's get cracking, get started, don't wait, let's push forward as for tomorrow, we'll be focusing on the My Achievements. Bye-bye.